is dead. The who? Here we go. Perfect. Is sending 1.2 polio vaccines to Gaza. Wow. Well, they must just care a lot about Palestinians, right? Because we can trust them. I think. I think there's some. I think it's a reputable, you know, organization that I forgot we're on kick. We have a kick right now, right? We we do. I also have a kick, and I have one million followers right now. No, you don't. I do. I, I just for that, it's two million. Okay, I really have to use. I I, I have to start checking out kick more because like. I think I literally have one follower. Hold on, I'll check. I'm pretty sure it's one follower. Who who made who made this again? Who this? Uh, who's the owner? Who of made kick? the kick? Uh, Indy. I definitely did. Oh, I have two followers. No, 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 two, no. Baby. That. What? Who is the owner of the of like the like the company like the kick? The streaming website. I mean, it's in beta, so. I'm- uh, it's this guy named Klaus. I don't know him very well. Uh, Train sure TV. Fine. I'm sure he's fine though. I've heard yeah. of him. Yeah. He's from Arizona. Oh, this guy's background. Anyway, the World Health Organization plans to announce 1.2 million polo vaccine doses to Gaza amid fears of polio outbreak. After the virus was detected in wastewater, how does that happen? Over the past 10 months, Israel has destroyed all of Gaza's wastewater treatment plants and most of Gaza's sewage pumps. WHO says it's aiming to vaccinate 600,000 Palestinian children under the age of eight and repeated its calls for a ceasefire, saying that its medical staff need absolute freedom of movement to administer the vaccines. Oh, come on. I mean, listen, I know they're doing a genocide, but do you really think they'd commit biological warfare against these people? Wait, that's 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 like a genocide staple. Forgetting we live in an empire of evil. It's an interesting question, and um, you know, I kinda wish I had a little bit more um time to deep dive into this, but um there is some like really excellent reporting on this going on online. Uh, it's been Ben and Swan. Uh, this video I wanted to show. This one came out today, but this is a uh, this is crazy. This is insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking like like a, a country like Trumpers freaked out over the China virus. What are they going to think about this? Just watch. The people of Palestine have now been under a barrage of attacks for over 300 days. The people in Gaza are facing starvation, dehydration, and now the spread of rare diseases due to Israel's humanitarian aid blockade and the deliberate targeting of civilian infrastructure, such as water treatment facilities. Recently, a soldier from the IDF's 601st Combat Engineering Battalion posted a video on his Instagram account showing his explosives unit blowing up the Tal Sutan water facility in Rahaf, the destruction of the Tal Sutan water reservoir in honor of Shabbat. The soldiers in this video seem to be carrying out a strategy that has been explicitly articulated by the Israeli government. In an op-ed, the former head of Israel's National Security Council and current military advisor, Giora Eland, made it crystal clear that manufacturing a crisis by creating conditions for disease to spread was a priority of the Israeli military in Gaza. He wrote this, quote, The international community warns us of a humanitarian disaster in Gaza and of severe epidemics. We must not shy away from this. Severe epidemics in the south of the Gaza Strip will bring victory closer and reduce casualties among IDF soldiers. In this man straight up is suggesting this is a, this is an IDF military advisor mm-hmm. saying that we should we should we should spread a plague in Gaza. Community warns us of a humanitarian disaster in Gaza and severe epidemics. We must not shy away from this. Severe epidemics in the south of the Gaza Strip will bring victory closer and reduce casualties among IDF soldiers. End quote. The country's finance minister and Netanyahu's right-hand man shared an article 
and said this, quote, I agree with every word. Well, last week, it was announced that Jesus, polio, man. one of the most contagious viruses on Earth, which 99% of the world, including Gaza, has entirely eradicated, was found in Gaza's water and sewage. And get this, the World Health Organization is now coming to the rescue with one million polio vaccines. Isn't that great? No, not really. See, the polio vaccine that That's the World Health Organization is sending to Gaza is a type of polio vaccine that the United States and other countries don't use anymore because it actually causes more issues than it solves. Namely, it causes polio. The WHO is sending one million doses of the OPV or oral polio vaccine. The oral polio vaccine contains a live polio virus. This live virus can replicate inside the intestines and spread in places with poor sanitation and plumbing. That means people can contract the virus from the vaccine virus. Now listen to this. In recent years, according to Science Magazine, more children have been paralyzed by the vaccine strain of the virus than by wild polio itself. In an interview with NPR, professor of microbiology, Raul Andino said this, quote, it's actually an interesting conundrum. The very tool you are using for polio eradication is causing the problem. In 2005, Oxford's Clinical Infectious Diseases periodical contended that the polio outbreaks in China, Egypt, Haiti, and Madagascar were also China. caused by the OPV, declaring that the time is coming when the only cause of polio is likely to be the vaccine used to prevent it. In 2009, the Clinical Infectious Diseases Journal published another article stating that the OPV is not only giving kids polio, but also seems to be ineffective in stopping polio transmission to begin with. In Syria, Bill Gates-backed vaccine organization called Gavi pledged $25 million for polio immunization in 2016. A year later, the WHO reported that 58 children in Syria had been paralyzed by the vaccine-derived form of the virus. The international community is desperately struggling to deliver water and food to Gaza, and yet, it has successfully provided one million vaccines to combat polio. This would be commendable if the vaccines were effective. They're not. Scientific evidence repeatedly shows that these particular vaccines actually cause polio outbreaks. But promoting the spread of disease, according to IDF officials, or strategy that Israel was embracing in order to defeat Hamas. In our next episode of Reckoning, Israel and God will explore the so okay so <clears throat> just a quick note <clears throat> okay quick note here um oh thanks man we're talking by we're talking about a country i've never Sorry. i mean the thing is is like th there's nothing that's like ever existed in like this in the history of um of, of uh i think world history of just a country to act with pure impunity to the to the point where where they're just releasing viruses, which I I also I've seen reports that there actually is no polio, and that there is you know that there's polio, but it's like mixed it's, with like determinants of like it's like a whole bunch of toxins. They have a bunch of shit mixed in there, but they're not all drinking that. They know that they're okay. they're not stupid. They're so, not. They're not. Yeah. A quick note here. I want everybody in the chat, real quick, to go into Google and type the Cutter incident. Because this has happened before. This happened at the beginning, actually. The Cutter incident was a situation where America's first polio vaccine, uh, coming out of uh, Cutter Laboratories, actually caused 40,000 cases of polio. You want me to play a video? 40,000. You want me to just play um, a video? Sure, if you like. Um, Wait, I've, I, I actually am not too familiar with this myself, and I'm interested. So um, I'm just looking on YouTube and just seeing the uh, first hits. This is just 10 minutes, so. It's only up to you. I'm 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 easy. Obviously. Permanently paralyzed, their muscles emaciating until there was nothing left of them. Some died in their sleep, and even adults weren't spared. 
So when the news of a polio vaccine got to your ears, you sighed with relief. But in just 48 hours, 27 children would die or get paralyzed by the thing that was supposed to save them. What went wrong? How did the vaccine lead to one of the worst medical disasters in the history of America? In April 1955, a breakthrough in medicine was about to happen. It was revolutionary. The dreaded polio virus was about to meet its match in a vaccine developed by Cutter Laboratories. Cutter Laboratories at that time was a family-owned pharmaceutical company in Berkeley, California, founded by Edward Aaron Cutter in 1895. The company had grown and expanded over the decades. During World War II, it had huge government contracts for blood plasma and penicillin. By 1955, the Cutter Laboratories was one of the most deeply rooted pharmaceutical companies in the country, and it was about to deliver the people of America from the dreadful hands of the polio virus. The media was in a frenzy. Parents were ecstatic, and rightfully so. America had recorded over 57,000 cases of polio in 1952 alone that paralyzed 21,000 people and killed over 3,000 others. Between 1953 and 1954, over 70,000 people were infected. Polio survivors had to wear painful metal braces on their legs or be placed into iron lung respirators to breathe. There was no vaccine, no cure, and no hope. People were panicking, afraid to buy fruits at the grocery store or let their children play in public swimming pools. Some hospitals sprayed acid in the children's noses to block the virus, but all it did was ruin their sense of smell. In his 2005 book, The Cutter Incident, How America's First Polio Vaccine Led to the Vaccine Crisis, Paul A. Offit wrote, A national poll found that polio was second only to the atomic bomb as the thing that Americans feared most. But the highly anticipated vaccine would only make matters worse. About a third of the children injected with the vaccine got infected with polio, several of them dying or getting paralyzed in the process. Months of frenzied development to find a polio vaccine finally paid off in early 1955. Hundreds of boxes marked polio vaccine rush, each containing thousands of tiny glass bottles filled with the much-awaited vaccine were packed and ready for delivery. Five drug companies, Eli Lilly, Park Davis, Weinth, Pittman Moore, and Cutter Laboratories had started the mass production of this vaccine just a year earlier. The man to thank for this was Jonas Salk, who had successfully developed a procedure through which the polio virus was killed with formaldehyde, effectively creating an antidote. Salk had earlier tested the vaccine on himself, his wife, and their three children. On April 26, 1954, the vaccine proceeded to the field study stage. Randy Kerr, a six-year-old second grader from Falls Church, Virginia, was the first to be injected with the vaccine in the cafeteria of the Franklin Sherman Elementary School in McLean. The study revealed that children who did not get the vaccine were three times more likely to be paralyzed with polio than those who did. When the study results were later revealed on April 12, 1955, it was nothing short of a miracle, and everybody wanted a jab for their children. The media got word of the vaccine and were breathless with excitement. The news made front-page headlines all over the country. On August 30th, 1954, Bernice E. Eddy, a veteran scientist at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, made a shocking discovery about the vaccines developed in Cutter Laboratory. The vaccines designed to protect against polio had instead infected one of the test monkeys with polio. There could only be one explanation. The vaccine contained the live, infectious polio virus. A disaster was brewing, Eddy warned. But when you are the American government in the 1950s, and a field trial of a vaccine reveals that it was 80 to 90% effective in protecting against polio, and your people are anxiously awaiting the savior, what do you do? You ignore the warnings and grant a license for mass production of the vaccine. By April 1955, the vaccine hit the markets. To reward its employees for their Does that sound familiar? Everybody. It's all recycled to the same pharma bullshit. We see received at the Sackler family, then we're seeing it with Pfizer, you know, things like that. Um, we just have... You ignore, you ignore the that, warnings. You ignore the warnings. And you just move forward anyway. Anyway. Not going to get into it. Don't get no, any there's, weird labels. There's no consequences. Uh, there's, never, there's never consequences. When is there, when is there ever actual consequences? I mean... <clears throat> How do you expect the government? That's... I'm telling you, like they could, they could, they could limit your travel. They could limit your space. They could limit your economic stability. They could limit your entertainment. They could limit a lot of things. But medical fascism is very scary. It's very scary. Once they start, the Nazis experimented up like this. Yeah, this is how you know, you just fucking vac. You know. Look at um
They did a lot. They did a lot of testing in Africa. I forgot what that case was. That 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 one's slipping my mind. The Tuskegee experiment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is just this I is mean, and, and, and and this is just like for the sake of it. I mean. Well, the reality is the pharmaceutical companies own the government, and you can you can just you can just go look it up. Go look at the biggest financial backers and contributors to uh, <clears throat> go look up the biggest financial contributors to uh, the American government. Look into the ties and stakes and invested interests the Canadian government has in the pharmaceutical industry. They're all working hand in hand. So why would anyone have any consequences why would there be any consequences for the pharmaceutical industry when when they've compromised their politicians of course that's not going to happen anyway right at these warnings 380,000 doses of the vaccine were administered over the next two weeks on april 27 1955 the Epidemic Intelligence Service determined that the 120,000 doses of vaccine administered by Cutter Laboratories contained live polio virus. Immediately, the United States Surgeon General, Leonard Schill, issued a recall. That's how the majority of viruses work. They, 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 it's like usually like a dead virus. But I mean, live polio is pretty bad. <laughs> um, yeah, they were really fucking around there. They were just like, I you mean, know what, I, let's I, just... I, I did read RFK's book. Um, there wasn't a whole lot that I explicitly remember. Um, I kind of, I, I, I either listened to it or I just like skim through it. Uh, not skim. I just like read fast and then like comprehend like sixty percent of it. Um, I read through a lot of, of it, and my like, conclusion was that RFK is a shitty Zionist shill. Um, yeah, I mean, that's no, like uh, <laughs> no, the I mean, biggest takeaway from that book, for me at least, was um, was the fact that all of these like organizations, um, they essentially like create work for themselves, kind of. Um, that's what I remember, but it was a while ago, and I think I read it when I was drunk, and yeah, it's a whole thing, because I read fast, too. Well, vaccines, so I, I do know that vaccines are the only form of medication that, um, like, require, like, undergo, like, text testing in order for it to be, like, legally distributed. Um, like, for example, like, if you're, if you're, if you're giving, um, like, if I were to give you, like, a SSRI or like uh, you know, a pain medication or anything like that. These are mm-hmm. we're talking about drugs that require like multiple like peer reviewed trials and years of research, right? And usually mm-hmm. that's the case with vaccines. But granted, they're not required this same threshold of like you need to like have peer reviewed, it needs to be tested. A lot of the times vaccines they're just kind of I mean, there's a process, but it's very not my, like regular medication. It's much more smoother. And it's much more experimental. Um, and half the times, you that's why you see fucking scandals like this. Yeah. So, <clears throat> to steel man, I hate to admit this, given his... Are, the, the problem is not vaccines themselves. It's that they're how, like, how uncontrolled they are. Yeah. yeah. So, to steel man RFK a bit. And I don't know if he's lying or telling the truth here because it's RFK. Uh, you know, there's probably a bear line around somewhere. But um, so to steal man RFK a bit, he made a point in an interview. I forget which, but he's like, I'm not anti vaccine. I just want them tested better. And that's kind yeah. of close to my perspective on vaccines. I just that's my want position. Us to, that's my position. I just want us to have better vaccines, which is why I criticize, for example, the recent vaccines. Because I want us, us to have better vaccines. That's it. Dude, I wasn't gonna wait, dude. Like I, I thought it was crazy from the beginning that everyone decided like we're gonna go just take a vaccine that's been around for three months and no one knows what it does we're just gonna wait and see 
Like I'm well, just I'm I was blown away. Like at that point, I was like, like is everyone? Were, are we just like heading towards a mass suicide event? What is this? No, it's uh, so. Here's it, was, the it became like a ritual, though. It became like, are you, you like, are you vaccinated? Yeah. And then you got shamed for it. That was the bigger. That was a very big problem. Yeah. So here's the problem. Yeah. There's a couple of major problems with that. It wasn't to 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 kind of to kind of give people like their proper due here. First off, it's like the whole world was locked down. Everybody was losing their minds. People had no social life. They couldn't do anything. Everybody was scared of COVID. They just wanted to get through this. So I, I get if, you know, you think that this was the thing that would bring us back to normal. Because a lot of people just wanted to get back to normal. That was kind of the framing. Secondly, there were, let, let's be real here, there were, there were kind of like major incentives to go along with it. For one, you know, like your 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 source of income might have been threatened. Uh, two, you know, your your personal freedom and your mobility might have been threatened. So, you know, I think on paper, if they just said like, "Hey, we have this thing," um, we're not really sure, like long term, how it's going to do, but this is the best we can do right now. Um, if you want to, if you want to roll the dice, go for it. Uh, if not, it's okay. I feel like the uptake would be much lower, but the problem is there was coercion. I, I don't know another word to describe it. There was coercion. There absolutely was. And at this point you have to admit that. Um, yeah, yeah I don't know what else to say. Uh, call for all uh, go ahead. I'm going to talk forever. Just go ahead. People are their vaccines at 1038 a.m. on the same day. Cutter Laboratories in Berkeley, California, sent a telegram to health departments and drug stores across West and Midwest America saying urgent. No further injections of Cutter polio vaccine are to be made. Immediately advise your physicians. But the damage had already been done. About 40,000 children injected with the Cutter vaccine came down with abortive or short lived polio. They experienced fever, sore throat, headache, vomiting, and muscle pain. According to Offit, within 48 hours of the recall, Cutter's vaccine had paralyzed or killed 25 children, 14 in California, 7 in Idaho, 2 in Washington, 1 in Illinois, and 1 in Colorado. A situation that should have been the best event in the decade had turned into this horrific nightmare. Everyone panicked. Offit wrote, It was one of the worst biological disasters in American history. It exploded the myth of the invulnerability of science and destroyed faith in the vaccine enterprise. Somewhere between Salk's laboratory and the syringes filled with the polio vaccine, something had gone wrong. But what was it? The polio vaccine was not Jonas Salk's first rodeo. Since 1941, he had been elbow deep in the search for influenza vaccines. After confirming that there were three strains of polio virus, Salk set out to develop a vaccine by inactivating all three types of the virus with formaldehyde. His inactivation procedure involved nine days of formaldehyde treatment, which would, in effect, kill the active virus. The problem with this procedure, according to Sven Gard, a virologist at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, was that in reality, at least 12 weeks of formaldehyde treatment was required for the active virus to become wholly inactivated. But the demand for the polio vaccine was too high. Children were dying. Even President Franklin D. Roosevelt had been paralyzed from the waist down due to a polio infection when he was 39. By February 1954, Salk had a 55-page protocol for developing a polio vaccine. Salk knew the risks involved with his procedure, but he believed that the manufacturing companies would follow his protocol as he intended and take the same precautions he had taken. He was wrong. The manufacturing companies cut down his 55-page vaccine production protocol to just five pages. On April 12, 1955, government officials gathered in a conference room to make a decision. Should licenses be granted for mass production of Salk's vaccine? The officials, including representatives of the Laboratory of Biologics Control Commission, quickly sifted through 2,000 pages of complex information regarding the vaccine. In less than three hours, they decided and concluded the meeting. That same day, the U.S. government granted five companies the license to produce the polio vaccine. It turned out to be one of the worst decisions the government ever made. And in a few months, first and second graders and their families would pay dearly for it. Towards the end of April 1955, it had become clear that the vaccine was harmful. The doses were recalled, but 380,000 children had already been injected with it. In total, 220,000 children were infected with the potent polio virus from the vaccine, with 164 children severely paralyzed and 10 killed. It did not stop there. 
the failed vaccine unlocked a chain of transmission that led to a polio epidemic worse than America had ever seen. The manufacturing companies had used the Mahoney strain of the virus to produce the vaccines because it is the most dangerous, so when inactivated, it created the most antibodies after tests. This would have been a brilliant way to ensure the efficiency of the vaccine, but it became a serious problem once the vaccine failed. We now had thousands of children infected with the most potent strain of the already deadly polio virus. It explains why the results were so catastrophic. Cutter Laboratories had been negligent in so many ways. Because the vaccines were so desperately needed, they cut corners to haste the production process. The company almost completely ignored the protocol Sulk had written regarding the manufacture of the vaccine. When they other specialists like Eddie raised the, the alarm, Cutter conveniently off. failed to inform the officials in charge of licensing no the vaccine of these concerns. No. No shit. Oh my god. History I can't believe right. they did that. It's so amazing that we never did that again. Thank goodness we learned from it's history. Good. It's really, I like that we learn our lessons in, our, in this country. We learn our lessons. You know? Between 1955 and 1957, have... Cutter Laboratories was sued for negligence and breach of implied warranty in about 60 court cases, with a total of 12 million in plaintiff claims. The company managed to avoid liability because the government was mostly to blame for the disaster. In the case of Gottsdanker v. Cutter Laboratories, the court ruled that Cutter was not negligent because most of the other companies producing the vaccine also had problems in activating the virus. Also, the company had followed the protocols approved by the government, even though the protocols themselves were faulty. No one took the blame for the Cutter incident. Many officials were fired, and Cutter got all the bad publicity. But Cutter settled its case with $3 million, of which $2 million was covered by the company's insurance. The government began to issue more rigorous regulations for all vaccines after the Cutter incident. By 1962, 400 million doses of safe polio vaccine were administered, and the cases of polio in the U.S. reduced significantly. Today, not many people remember the horror of the 1950s Cutter polio vaccine disaster, but for the people who were affected either directly or indirectly, the memories still linger. Now, what? You what? may be okay, wondering fine. if Israel's behind the polio epidemic, and I got my dog with me. Um, if Israel's behind the polio epidemic, so the polio is just a natural occurring virus. How would you how would you create polio? Now there's some evidence behind that, which I, I do want to share this as well, because this is like, um, this is a piece by Vanessa Bealy, who um, I really respect. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, real quick. I forgot. I got distracted by the cat. I, I have crippling ADHD. I apologize. But real quick, uh, Nahilo had a really interesting comment here. Is there some substance to the idea that polio had more to do with DDT and pesticide poisoning more than has been admitted? That's an Did interesting uh, take. It up. Pull it up. It's in uh, It's on YT, the the YouTubes, as the kids say. Uh, here, Nilo. That's interesting because there has been an argument that proper sanitation did more for eradicating disease than the actual immunizations. That's <clears throat> been an interesting argument as well. I think they both probably help. I, I'm not of the mind that introducing just of how much I know about medicine and science, uh, I, it can never hurt to expose your body um, to a pathogen. It will, it will, it will build immunity. It will, unless we've been lied to about everything. This whole thing is a psyop, and reality is a simulation. The Anunnaki are actually just controlling everything from afar, and we were only biologically engineered to. Now I'm going way too tinfoil. Okay, sure. <laughs> it could, it could. Toxicology versus virology. Rockefeller Institute and criminal polio fraud. Um, this is this is an interesting piece to think about. Just to keep that in the back of the mind while while theorizing, and there's no like hard proof evidence that uh, Israel is 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 involved 
in cooperation with the WHO to produce an artificial polio epidemic in order to sell vaccines and to kill more Palestinians. Or sell <laughs> or sell genocide. That could be an angle That's as true. well. Oh That's shit. True. Look at all the polio. That's why they're dying. Look at all this polio causes bullet wounds. <laughs> Sorry, I let's let's rewind moment. back to let's rewind back to early twenty early uh, early twentieth century America for a moment. Ew. The most striking aspect of the entire polio saga in the USA during the first half of the twentieth century was the fact that every key phase of business was controlled by people tied to what became the Rockefeller Medical Cabal. This fraud started with claims by the director of the Rockefeller Institute, Simon Flexner, that he and his colleague, Paul Lewis, had isolated a pathogen invisible to the eye, smaller than bacteria, which claimed that it was a paralyzing sickness in a series of outbreaks in the United States. How did they come to this idea? Well, in a paper published in 1909, the Journal of the American Medical Association, Flexner claimed that he and Lewis had isolated the Paul they have a pio, polio mitilis virus responsible, and he reported that he was successfully pass, passaged the virus through several monkeys, from monkey to monkey, and they began injecting the diseased human spinal cord tissue from a young boy who had died, presumably from the virus, into the brains of the monkeys. And then after the monkey fell ill, the suspension of diseased spinal cord tissue was then injected into the brains of other monkeys who other who also fell out. This is we we're doing, dude. You thought the doctor uh, Fauci dogs story was bad? Like, there's some really wild shit we do. Yeah, um, the monkeys are the worst because like they share the like the closest like chromosomes to us. So like, it's mm-hmm. like the fact, and the, that's the that's the heartbreaking thing is like they're. Monkeys have like the closest like eyes to us, and it's just very mm-hmm. like you ever like go to the zoo and actually see a monkey. There's like a you're, there's like a little bit of like you know share. They're not just like a regular the mammal. They're they're pretty smart. Um, no, it was uh, it was really weird. Haram. I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this moment. And I don't know if y'all have had this as well, but uh, the last time I went to the zoo with one of my best friends and uh, my sister tagged along as well. We went to the gorilla exhibit and I'll never forget this. It's the most like, it's the most like non-starter sort of thing. But, um, I was just watching the gorillas and one of them came and sat like next to where I was watching and he turned and looked at me and he looked me in the eye. Have you ever looked at a gorilla in the eye? It's a really weird fucking feeling. It's an incredibly weird feeling. Because it's like, oh my god, you're human, but you're not human. Like, I looked at him in the eye, and I didn't look at him the same way I look at any other animal, really. Um, but yeah, the point was, like, that's, that's... If you ever go to a zoo, just kind of hang out with the gorillas and try and catch one of their attention it's a really weird feeling when they actually like interact with you. There's, there's like, something really about that kind of like, like human yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Like you're, 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 uh, it's like you're connecting with the half of your DNA that isn't Anunnaki DNA. You know what I mean? Um, so let me, let me get you. This is, this is pretty uh, big. So let me make this. Like this. They proclaimed that the Rockefeller Institute doctors had proven that the polio virus causality for the mysterious disease. They hadn't done anything of the sort. Flexer and Lewis even admitted that we failed to utterly discover bacteria either in film preparations or in cultures that could account for the disease. And since among our long series of propagations of the virus in monkeys, so not one animal showed in lesions. The I can't pronounce these medical. Whatever they're going to call on, where? where? Kachi, kaki. They're doing the Kochi. Um, Kochi. 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 Okay. Kochi. It's Kochi. Yeah. Kochi. I'm calling it Gucci. We are medical professionals. 
<laughs> described by some <laughs> described by some previous investigators, we had failed to obtain such bacteria from the human material slightly by us. We failed we felt that they could be excluded from the consideration. What they then did was to make a bizarre supposition, a leap of faith, not a scientific claim. They took their hypothesis of a viral ex exogenous agency and made it a fact with no proof whatsoever. They asserted, therefore, the infecting agent of epidemic polio belongs to the class of minute and minute and filterable viruses that have not thus far been demonstrated with certainty under the microscope. Therefore, they simply asserted that it must be polio that is killing the virus, that is killing the monkeys. After little did he know that the actual culprit and, and putting little them, did he know that like <laughs> yeah. little did he know that the actual culprit for the killing the monkeys was actually it was Israel actually yeah. I mean, there's there's another connection I'm kind of like trying to make here. Um, mm -hmm. But this so-called virus was that we were they were injecting into monkeys is hardly pure. They were putting they were taking it out of the the spinal cord of one monkey, injecting into the brain of the other over and over and over again. That doesn't sound like gain of function research. That actually sounds like Attack on Titan, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds kind of cool, actually. Not really. The, the <laughs> Man, you don't want to be the like Beast the, Titan? I'd love to... Uh, uh, you you watch The to, Boys? You watch The Boys? By yeah, time? of course. I'm only on season four. I'm, I just started season four, so... Don't spoil me. I'm going to be like, honest. Like compound the, so, the, the, the latest... Does it, the latest is it terrible? Season, it's the terrible. latest season has just gotten really, like, shit libby political... Uh, it's a little weird because they have like they've got Homelander who's doing the whole like Trump MAGA thing but then they've got this other chick who's like kind of a sociopath but she pretends to just be like weird and aloof the intelligent black woman sort of yeah no there, there's oh, a, no there's a woman no there's a woman there's like a oh no 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 um, I forgot her name She's working with Homelander. I forget her name too, but yeah, she's like the master. She's like L from Death Note, kinda. Okay, okay. But you know, I'm not going to read this whole thing. The whole thing, you know, it kind of goes into a lot of like the history of just like creating virology. You know, a lot of us are like kind of like you know already kind of like familiar with that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is a really great read by Vanessa Billy. She even goes into like the. Um, the medical and like uh, chemical warfare used during World War Two, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which is like this is all connected. It's all connected. It's all connected, and you can see how 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 you know polio itself. Although you would think it is kind of you know like a naturally occurring virus, it the basis of that is actually not that not that true. <laughs> Now, the connection to Israel I make here. I need you guys to watch you. And I want you to thank, uh, you know, your fellow Israelites for creating the COVID vaccine, for helping battle COVID and help you lock down in your house for three years. In the global fight against COVID-19, the Jewish people who make up a tiny percentage of the world's population have had an outsized impact in the difficult battle to protect lives as scientists. Chief medical officers and top healthcare officials. Yet the contributions of one extraordinary person tower above the rest. That extraordinary person is Pfizer Chairman and CEO, Dr. <laughs> Albert Borla. Dr. Borla led his team to deliver a COVID-19 vaccine in record time, while taking a risk by declining U.S. federal funding to avoid government bureaucracy and expedite vaccine. Did you, you just have to go and 
to like the history tab on Wikipedia. And that's it. Production. A child of Holocaust survivors from a Greek Jewish community destroyed by the Nazis. He's proud of his Jewish heritage, is active in Holocaust remembrance and education, and a strong supporter of Israel, which was the first country outside the U.S. to receive the Pfizer vaccine and the antiviral pill. That's where all the testing happened. That's where the initial test was. They, they were the first ones to get it. Also, did, did, just did as a disclaimer, as a disclaimer, I'd just like to make, I'd like you guys to chew on this for a second. Just chew on it. Anyone can convert to Judaism. Anyone. You can just convert, which is why a lot of these people's surnames are not very Jewish. It's not even necessarily Jewish. It's like they, a lot of these people have connections to, like direct connections to Israel. It's not, that's no, not like, I, a, that's not like a, yeah. I, I, I think the reason why you can convert to it is because what they mean by Jewish is just Zionist. I think that's kind of like what it actually, at this point, like, no, there's the whole like, sex, there's different groups of Jewish, like, you know, they're, it's like any religion, they're all fighting each other. So, no, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, but, but like, it's, it goes with this whole, like, we need to, like, the thing they're doing to kind of shield themselves from any kind of criticism for what they're doing to the Palestinians. They're like, it's anti-Semitic. It's, um, you know, if you criticize Israel, it's anti-Semitic. Um, but anybody can kind of just convert to this. I think it's just a big front. I think they're just using Jewish people to, like, completely mask the the Zionist, like, like undercurrents, I guess. You're saying this video? Yes, exactly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, um, I would, I, 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 uh, I went on I mean, a I tangent agree. there that didn't really make like a lot of sense in the context, but I felt like I had to blurt it out. This is, uh, these are the thoughts that go through my head on a daily basis. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Let's World continue is before infinitely we better off, so. with Dr. Borla helping lead the charge to save lives. With more than two and a half billion Pfizer vaccine help is certainly not see the Pfizer vaccine a Greek Jewish community destroyed by the Nazis. He's proud of his Jewish heritage, is active in Holocaust remembrance and education, and a strong supporter of Israel, which was the first country outside the U.S. to receive the Pfizer vaccine and the antiviral pill. The pandemic is certainly not over, but the world is infinitely better off with Dr. Borla helping lead the charge to save lives with more than two and a half billion Pfizer vaccine doses already distributed. Because of Dr. Borla's extraordinary contribution to humanity as the world battles the worst health crisis in 100 years. Dr. Albert Borla has been selected as the recipient of the 2022 Genesis Prize, the Jewish Nobel Prize. Thank you, and congratulations, Dr. Borla. Okay. Thanks so much, Dr. Borla. You're, the, you're based, man. You really did like us a solid there. <laughs> I personally like when he reported that it was 100% effective at preventing transmission. That was a really responsible thing for a person to post on Twitter. That was great. That definitely didn't lead to people like making the wrong call when it came to a medical decision about their bodies. Thanks, buddy. That was fucking dope. I, I saw. Uh, Holy shit! I saw something like like ninety like ninety four percent of the population is vaccinated or something. They like a super uh, high. Yeah, here uh, we go. Yeah. Do you remember that weird psyop where it was like you're not like you're not a leftist unless you get the jab? Do you remember that bullshit? Why is this like? Just for the record, y'all, I'm as left as they come. I'm a proud Marxist. And uh, zero. 
That would have been different if I lived in Cuba. Probably would have gotten all of them. Yeah, I would have. I would have gotten the commie vaccines. Fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Jab me up with those com commie vaccines. I'm doing that. Fred Edward, BB made a financial deal with Pfizer to experiment on his population. Pure evil. <clears throat> yeah, no, the, it, it's it's actually it's actually pretty bad. They like the, the, the they have a they have ten times the vaccination rate than us. But yeah, that article's old it's from COVID. Uh, there they have. Um, They're like a center of like medical. Experimentation. I'm going to run. Yes. Yes. It's called bioconvergence in Israel. I made that point. I've been making that point for so long, my dude. Amazing how much evil you can do when it's done in the name of God. Religion has been used for a shield to commit atrocities for centuries upon centuries. Yeah. Now, I want, I also want, I, I, I just want to share this because, like, this is just like, to highlight the, you know, medical industry in Israel, like where, like this is coming from, and I do want to kind of like get like more into this um, at at some point, like more into like the transhumanism and like that kind of like more like deeper shit, like investigation, um, mm -hmm. because like this is this is really like just real shit. I mean, we're already like technically cyborgs with our. Um, our, our, our attachments to our phone being like literally everything. Yeah, I have glasses. I'm basically a robot. Yeah, I mean that's you're 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 like half a cyborg. You're like a quarter of a yeah. cyborg. I'm basically Adam Smash. You require you do re you require like yeah you you basically require <laughs> like material. I mean I don't know how electronic, but if you, imagine you're wearing Google glasses. I I I'm I'm never I'm never taking part of that. Sorry, never doing yeah. the Google glasses thing. That is just an excuse I wouldn't either. for. I wouldn't no, either. That's, that's just scary. I would. Not that's either. scary, y'all. Don't do that. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. this. This is you want to see something? This is scary. This is scary. The medical revolution is in full swing. All fields of medicine are changing, improving, renewing. The past year showed us that the growing need for innovative technologies used in developing more precise, personalized medicines and treatments is already becoming reality. Among the leaders of this revolution is Israel. Great. Awesome. Really high tech environment is one of the leading environments or ecosystems that can enable this. We have some of the best scientists in the world. People think outside the box, look for creative solutions to problems. Yes, Israel is an international center of innovation with groundbreaking technologies in health, in cyber, in smart transportation, and alternative energy. Israeli innovation in the field of personalized medicine combines biology and engineering. It's called bioconvergence. What exactly is bioconvergence? Biomics is the only clinical stage phage company out there that targets chronic indication. We deploy phage, which are viruses that infect specific bacteria. I developed a small camera that is implanted inside a patient's eye. Our technology translates light and optical signals into electrical Wait, sorry, pulses what? that enables vision. Yeah. What? They're doing this. They're yeah. just trying to slip this in. Did you notice that? They're, they're just trying to slip this in. Yeah. They're working they're on this. this big buildup of like Israel's did, did, did base. They're doing good science. Did you, see, did you see Elon's brain chip yet? 
the course, guy playing. But... He's, he's pl- did you see him playing Minecraft with with just his brain? Yeah. The dude's playing Mario Kart now with his brain. Oh, he has no is... hands. Listen, listen. I'll be the first one to say, Girl guys, don't crazy. Don't take me wrong here. Yeah. If we didn't live under capitalism, I would be so excited for this shit. I'd be so excited. Oh my god, I would be. I would be the that is implanted the inside of it. Dude, but we live our technology under, trans- We live under capitalism, which means that there isn't going to be a good use for any of this. It's just going to be used to suppress the proletariat. It's going to be really expensive, and that there's going to be like no access to it anyway. But like e- either way, it's like they, this is technology that they're that's being used to. Mod, like not just genetically modify you, like physically modify you. Translates light and optical signals. I guess genetic is also physical, but that the but Israel is the is the uh, you know they're they're leading the charge on all of this. Into electrical pulses that enables vision to the patient. The technology that we have developed is under the title bioconvergence. We have chemistry, engineering, biology, immunology. Besides bio, we biofabricate tissues from human cells. We take 3D printing and we combine this together with the biology, which essentially brings us the capability to fabricate the tissue in the same anatomical yes. structure as it is in the human body. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Because when you're able to collaborate with multidisciplinary capabilities like ICT, big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, then you can create integrative, creative, and innovative medical solutions. The Israel Innovation Authority creates national and international networks and provide with funding to initiate projects. Many of Israel's startup nation streams parallel Jefferson streams. Because of Israel's exceptional innovation ecosystem, we've developed a series of creative partnerships across a spectrum of Israeli institutions. So let me ask you a question. If Israel is at the forefront of bioconvergence with the world's most advanced technologies and some of the world's leading medical research centers, and when $40 billion worth of worldwide profits from medicine stem from Israeli inventions, can you afford not to be here? I think I can. I think I can. Yeah, I'm good. I'm so fucking good. I'm good. You genocidal I think I'm good. monsters. I think I'm, I'm good. I think I'm gonna pass. I think I might, I might pass on this one. I think it's great. Honestly, you're giving people eye vision again. You're giving people vision again. Uh, literally giving you a robot like arm. <clears throat> Cameras in your eye. I think I'm good. I think yeah. That's like you're you're literally like Pegasus from Yu Gi Oh. Fucking crazy shit. Crazy well, shit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. But, um... It's depressing. Not uplifting. That Israel has this degree of capability when it comes to uh, innovation. Because I know what they do with innovation. We're all seeing what they do with innovation. We're all seeing it in real time. All I can say is Nuremberg 2.0. Yeah, with the, with like, the, 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 like the AI targeting that they're using to like, you know, target Hamas. Oh, uh, hey, guys, 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 uh, who can tell me uh, what that AI targeting? Can someone tell me the company uh, responsible for that? Does anybody know the company responsible for the AI targeting that they're currently using on Palestinians? Yes, crap. Palantir. Okay, um, Palantir. That's interesting because that's the correct answer. Um, so, are there any presidential candidates currently that are involved with anybody uh, associated with Palantir? Uh, that that guy from uh, from uh, Oklahoma or whatever the fuck. Oh, the guy. The, the, so he's got to be. A, He's got to be a Democrat, right? Because he's like... No, 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 he's a Republican. He's a Republican, for sure. 
Oh, he's Donald Trump's vice president. Yeah, right. He, he, he's right. Getting investors from Peter Thiel. Uh, wait, and he doesn't doesn't Peter Thiel? He he has investments in in Rumble dot com. Right, the one yeah, that we're streaming on right now. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god. But it's okay, guys. Trump's gonna drain the swamp. Right after he what exactly? I'm actually puts you in a pod and what happens. The bugs. I, I am actually kind of concerned what happens. Um, he's from Ohio, not Oklahoma, but um, I'm kind of just concerned what happens after you know Rumble posts in a Trump presidency. Because like, let's say, let's face it, like I don't think Kamala has a chance. I don't know about you, but I don't think Kamala. Has a, we'll get to the electoral shit later, but like, um, I don't think Kamala has a chance. Um, Trump is your next president. Um, I could be biased. I, I don't know. But, like, this is just, like, I think a lot of the, the hype is fake right now. I, I, I will get into that later. But mm -hmm. um, what happens in a Trump presidency and we're speaking, we have to talk shit about the president on Rumble? Um. That's going to be really interesting because is Rumble going to. Are we going? Is, is it Rumble going to abide by its free speech principles yeah, and not censor? Exactly. That's I'm curious exact, to see what happens. I want to know what happens. I do want to know what happens. That's the exact thought I had. It's like, okay, yeah. Rumble, you're all free speech. Because here's the thing, guys all these like finish. pro That's free it. speech, all these pro free speech, like right wing Ooh. motherfuckers. They become fucking Twitter Karen wine moms the second you criticize their guy. Look at, look, go look at Libs of TikTok. We covered this on Politically Homeless. Go look at Libs of TikTok. Go look at all these big right winger accounts. The second, the second uh, anybody had some opinions about the the Trump assassination, which I think was a total fucking psyop because it was. I don't know people who don't arrive at that conclusion. I don't know what you're thinking um it was bullshit of course but uh like okay the second the second anybody had some opinions all of these free speech warriors started running cancel trains and doxing these people and getting them fired from their jobs so i've said this forever none of these neither of these factions the liberal and the conservative faction, neither of these factions in the West in general, Canada, America, UK, any Western country, not, none of them have any convictions. The only thing they care about is, does this benefit my team? And I would predict that the second we get possibly a, a second Trump presidency, um, on paper, it looks like that would be better for the establishment because here, politically homeless, we don't we don't buy into this whole electoralism shit. Okay, all right. It's this is pro wrestling. They pick a spokesperson to represent the ruling class, and then they just keep doing whatever the fuck they're doing. Okay, Trump beating out Obama's drone strike record proves that. Okay, nothing ever fundamentally changes, but it's going to be interesting in a Trump presidency if if Rumble's going to stay the course, or if they're going to start clamping down on people talking shit about Trump. My I mean, gut tells me. Yeah. My gut tells me. Um, my gut tells no. me that's yes, probably not because. I think Trump, and again, I'm just looking at this as a Marxist who's completely outside of this bullshit, right? Trump's supposed to be the heel. He's supposed to play the heel. Okay? He's supposed to be the bad guy. Because at the end of the day, regardless, um, look at what Trump did during his no, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they've already I'm pretty sure they've already accepted that Trump is the next president. They, they I don't think they they've yeah. They've kind of already conceded to that. Kamala was such a last-minute option. Obama didn't want Kamala. But let, let's not get off on a tangent.